Hey guys, since we're in the midst of a busy political season, we have some do's and don'ts for what you can and cannot do as service members. We are celebrating Women's History Month, and we have the Graduate Education Plan for Fiscal Year 17. If you turn on the TV, it's difficult not to see the race to be the next president of the United States. Regardless of who you vote for, there are things we can and cannot do as service members regarding political campaigns and elections. So first, let's talk about what we can't do. We cannot use our authority to influence others to vote for a particular candidate. We cannot be listed as a sponsor for any party or candidate, and we cannot participate in political events while in uniform. Okay, so what can we do? We can register, vote, and express a political opinion. We can encourage other service members to exercise their right to vote. We can attend political events while not in uniform, sign nomination petitions, make financial contributions, and put a normal size bumper sticker on our car endorsing a candidate or party. On social media, we may like a candidate or party, but cannot share or retweet fundraising posts by candidates or parties. We can also participate fully in the Federal Voting Assistance Program, or FVAP. The FVAP provides you a way to register to vote. Go to www.fvap.gov, then on the home page, find your state of record to begin the process. So this month, the Navy is celebrating women's history. Today, 18% of our sailors are female, and more than 280,000 have deployed in support of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Over the last year, we have seen combat jobs open to women by SecDef, and subs are open for enlisted women to serve on. Women play an integral part in the past, present, and future of the Navy, and we're happy to celebrate their legacy. For more information on the history of women in the Navy, read the story on Navy.mil. Finally, the graduate education plan, including quotas for fiscal year 17, has been released. This plan provides 1,600 funded opportunities for officers and enlisted to earn their degrees. This includes 412 quotas at the Naval Postgraduate School and 180 quotas at the top universities in the country. To read all the quotas scheduled to be available, check out NAVADMIN 052-16 on NPC. Well, that's all for this week. For any questions, send us the message at usnpeople at gmail.com. For the Chief of Naval Personnel, I'm MC2 LJ Burleson. Thanks for watching.